Hello and welcome to topic 4 in MATE 310 and 350 on the viscoelastic behavior of polymers. In this lecture we're going to focus on the mechanical behavior of polymers and what we mean by viscoelastic behavior specifically. Recall that the mechanical behavior of polymers is radically different from that of other materials. Specifically it has a lower elastic modulus, lower strengths, and greater elasticity, especially for rubbers, or higher ductility if we're talking about thermoplastics. So as you can see from the graph, steel and copper have much higher strengths than the weaker polycarbonate or polymethylmethacrylate, and materials like rubbers or polyethylene have much higher strain to failures than do metals, indicating higher ductility or higher elasticity. Metals and silicates are also what we call linear elastic, meaning that up until the yield point, the response between stress and strain is fairly linear and follows Hooke's law. This is where polymers differ from other materials, in that they have a nonlinear response to stress and strain. So here we see the blown up version of the stress strain diagram for a polymer, and note that the elastic portion of the curve before the yield region is nonlinear. So Hooke's law clearly does not apply to a polymer. And sometimes this, this curve is also time dependent. Depending on how fast I apply the stress, I can get different uh, shapes of curves. This is called a viscoelastic response. So let's talk a little bit more about the viscoelastic response and how it differs from other responses. So imagine I apply a force at time t equals zero, and I hold that force constant until time, until time t equals t. Time, time t equals t. As you can see, in a solid-like elastic material, or linear elastic material, I get a strain that's determined by Hooke's law with a constant strain response until time t, and then when I remove that force, the strain returns to zero. That's the kind of elastic response we're accustomed to. Now, if I'm dealing with a viscous fluid like a liquid, the strain gradually increases with time proportional until I reach the time where we remove the load, and then you'll notice that the strain remains constant. It doesn't return back to its original shape. So that's a viscous response. A viscoelastic response is quite a bit different. There's a time dependency for the strain to reach the maximum value at times t equals t, and then when that, strain is, that stress is removed, the strain returns back to the original value. You get a recovery response. But again, this recovery response is also time dependent. So viscoelastic behavior differs from elastic behavior in that there's a time dependency of the response of the material. Viscoelastic behavior is often observed in materials that exhibit both a linear elastic response and a time dependent response simultaneously under applied load. And we most commonly see this response in polymers at temperatures between the glass transition and the melting temperature. Below the glass transition temperature, the material behaves more glassy or linear elastically, and above the melting point, it becomes a viscous liquid. Polyurethane foam is a material that has a glass transition of around 20 degrees Celsius, just below room temperature, which allows these materials to deform viscoelastically at room temperature and makes them a very good cushioning material for many applications. So there's two, three types of viscoelastic responses that we observe in materials. The first, which we've already seen, is called the creep response. If I apply a constant stress over a time from T0 to T1, I get a viscoelastic response in the strain, and then I get a return of the viscoelastic response back to zero strain after that time T1 where the stress is released. Another type of response is called the stress relaxation response. In this case, I apply a, a fixed strain. I've stretched the material to a fixed amount. <coughs> Excuse me. A fixed amount, and I hold that strain for, a t for an indefinite period of time. During that time that I'm holding the strain, the stress in the material actually is reduced as the chains align themselves relative to the applied stress axis. This is called stress relaxation. A third possibility is a sinusoidal ap applied strain. <coughs> in this case, as the stress is applied sinusoidally, there's a delay or lag or called a phase shift in the strain response. That phase shift is related to a parameter called delta, which is known, which is the real phase shift, and is a, pro a material property that determines how much the strain will lag behind the stress. And it's an important uh, parameter in determining how well a material will dampen vibrations, for example. 